Hey guys, we're back with another update on my Fluval Evo 13.5. Um, so what I'm going to be going through today is um, I haven't got anything new. Um, I haven't bought anything, meaning like I haven't got any more livestock or I haven't got corals yet. Um, but what I have done is made an improvement on the filtration, um, mainly chamber one. Um, don't think you can see. Um, but what I'm going to show you what I've uh, done to the filtration, um, what I've got rid of, what I did have, and then after that we're going to go through an update, what I've, what, what's been going on uh, with the livestock, how they've been getting on, and yeah. Uh, so let's start off with the filtration. This is the uh, here's the tank. Uh, so what I'm going to do is this rear lid. Well, I'm going to move this chair just a second. This rear lid. Um, well, on the on this Evo, on the Evo lids, um, you do get quite a bit of like condensation on the inside. So it might start dripping. As you can see in there, it's quite wet. That it's dripping everywhere now. So I need to. It's hard doing this one-handed. There we go. Like that. Any bits drip off? Was there anything dripping down the side? There we go. See some water's dripping off there, and um, that's just some condensation. And I usually put it upside down there. Now we have access to the rear chambers. Um, this is kind of visible here. So uh, I'm going to say what I uh, previously had, um, and that was so what would flow through here, um, and then any organic waste would get skimmed um, in the skimmer, which I no longer have. Um, now it was the Fluval PS2 skimmer. Um, I've ditched that now and switched it for something much better. Um, and then after that, um, it would go through. I think up, it's approximately like ten fins all down the side, down the side of that little slit there. It was all the way down to like, I don't know here. Um, so then what would go through there, and then it would hit. Um, um, a sponge, like a, it's, the, it's the same sponge as what came with the tank, which is a little blog, but we cut it down so it's just a strip, which was like half an inch thick. So what would come through here, hit the sponge, which came out to like here. Um, and then after that, you would have, it's in between 900 and a kilo of Biohome Ultra Marine. Um, I've still got that in there, but um, yeah, I'll get to that. Um, and then there's one little hole, kind of, it's kind of like a little slit again, but it's a little larger uh, at the bottom, and then it would get pumped back into the uh, into the aquarium out of there. It would also get heated from here, um, and the temperature probe was in here, um, and I've moved that now. Um, so now I've changed it from that to this water going through here. Um, any large bits, so any leftover food that's been floating around the tank has got. Uh, through here or anything uh, large, I guess, um, has to get everything, ev anything like that is going to get trapped uh, by the filter floss and it is also going to uh, polish your water off a little bit as well, which is good. Um, so, and then the water would go through that. Um, if anything did get through that, there's a sp quite a thick sponge that goes down to like here ish. Um, that's if anything was to get through that, but I'm ninety five percent sure it won't. Um, and then that the sponge is well, it's mainly to keep this filt floss pad upwards, so it's well upright. Um, and it does give a tiny bit more filtration, but you don't necessarily need it. And then below that, in this uh, section right here, um, there's about two hundred grams of Biohome Ultra. Uh, marine, um, which is one of the bags that I had in the second chamber, and I now have one of them in the first chamber. Um, and then probably the biggest part to chamber one is you might notice that there's two slots here. This is the new one on this side. Um, that is a uh, acrylic panel that has been slided down, um, and that's blocked off about 70% of the fins. Uh, so there's three left at the bottom. So water goes, so the flow goes through, so it goes through your filtration, is so down this way instead of going through that way. Um, so it goes down and it will go through th three slits, 
it turned out to be about one, two, three, um, and then all the rest are blocked. No water can get in there. That's pretty much wedged in there, and it's not siliconed. So if we did need to get it out for some reason, um, we can. It's easily slideable, um, but that uh, can uh, stay where it is. Um, and then when it hits those three slits at the bottom, it'll go through there um, and hit your the rest of about. I would say 750 or 800 grams of Biohome Ultramarine um, in this chamber. So this is your biological section. And then in here is your main manic uh, mechanical. Um, and then you've got a tiny bit of biological in here. And then in your last section, um, what I added yesterday is carbon. Um, it's the uh, respec carbon. Uh, I've also got the heater in here and the temperature probe is actually in this one now. Um, it's not going to make a difference, um, only that um, it's just that too many cables was going through here and it was hard to get this uh, rear lid on because the cables had to go through these little gaps and it was hard getting loads of the cables in that small gap um, so I kind of I spread it out a little more. Um, so this is the heat one, pump, temperature probe and this is the light which goes into here. Um, so that's my filtration upgrade. Um, which has been running for about, well, actually a week today, a week this minute. Um, and that's that's how much it's collected in a in a week, which is, I've got to say, pretty much nothing. This might even go three, maybe possibly a month. You, you could possibly get a month out of that. Um, thickness does kind of matter, but if you go too thick, it's only going to trap stuff at the top. Um, and it's not going to get get much stuff. So this thing, this is kind of perfect, right? That's kind of half an inch, um, maybe even less. And this sponge is quite thick as well. Um, so that's the uh, that's the filtration modification, which is uh, quite a big modification, um, much better so far um, than what my last one was. Uh, it's making the water crystal clear, which you can see at the moment. Uh, if you look through this way, it does have a slight haze to it. Um, on the top we have loads of uh, surface agitation for any uh, well for oxygen to well stay keep oxygen in, in the uh, the tank um and then we got this one which is your main your know, display um uh flow um at some point i might add a little 300 lit 300 litre now eheim compact pump which is the same we've got in here but the uh, the smallest version the 300 which will stick into there and then it will just have one big 300 litre an hour jet which is the same that is coming out of that one, the one at the bottom um, just coming all the way out here and then you could have slightly more surface vegetation um, which is more oxygen which, uh, which is great um, yeah um, I guess that's my filtration explained um, but that's not it. We do have to get to the update next. Um, so let's talk about what's going on with the fish. Um, yeah. Right. Um, so I'm going to be going through everything one by one. So let's start off with the crab. Uh, where is the crab? Um, let's find him real quick. Uh, don't know where he is, but he's in here somewhere. That's the firefish. Um, yeah, the crab's in there somewhere, uh, see if you can find him, he's got like a kind of dark shell, he's quite small. Um, so the crab has actually shed its skin, which I didn't know crabs would actually do that, but apparently they do. Um, it did shed its skin, the shrimp ate it, um, the crab probably picked at it as well. Um, it's a blue-legged hermit crab, um, it's been doing great getting any spare food, it even does eat algae wafers which I would treat to um, every now and again um, and yeah it might eat um, any uh, diatoms in the sand maybe a little bit but the uh, the conch is mainly for that um, uh, so yeah the uh, the crab the crab also did switch uh, switch shells to this longer one at the front um, for about a couple hours and then switched back so might switch the uh, it'll probably switch eventually when it starts to get bigger and then it kind of outgrows its shell it would switch to a larger one which i have four in here one two three four um so we can choose what one he wants to switch to the one that fits his size the most um 
so yeah that's that's the crab um doing great so far he did hide away though um for a couple of days whilst he was shedding his skin which is i didn't expect that but i guess they kind of hide away um for a couple of days whilst they're shedding their skin um so yeah that's the crab uh moving on to the shrimp shrimp also might have mentioned this in my previous video don't know but it was roughly about a week ago um that i well the shrimp shed its skin as well um he ate his own as well he ate the whole thing within two days um which is just what he does he, well shrimp have to shed their skin eventually because they're they whilst they grow in their skin gets too tight on them and eventually it's going to start splitting and it's just going to shed off um so they shed it off um and then they'll eat it again um so yeah so he does get slightly larger um after the skin comes off um because that skin is keeping pressure on his um on his main body and that's kind of compacting down his actual growth size um so whilst the skin comes off he'll raise um his body will get slightly bigger um and he does look a little bit bigger um tiny bit a tiny bit um and after he shed his skin he did look a lot more red that day as well but he has gone slightly darker um like usual now um so that's the shrimp um doing good also he is on spectrum pellets which i'll get to what i'm feeding in just a sec uh moving on to the the uh, firefish uh, he's in his hole at the moment which is in in this rock right here this means kind of arcing rock at the on this this side um there's a little hole in it which he likes to hide in he's not he's getting slight slowly more uh, confident settling into the uh the environment might take a while we don't know um hopefully he starts coming out more and interacting with the fish um there's been no fighting in the tank he hasn't been fighting with anyone he's just really peaceful is also on spectrum pellets um again we'll get that get into that uh in a sec um yeah i think he's yeah i think he's in there yeah i see his little head poking out um he might just be hiding because i've got the camera out and i guess i'm here and i've been doing yeah showing you guys the filtration um but yes yeah, so other, other than him hiding away quite a bit uh he's been doing great um moving on to my favorite uh, the clownfish, which I did do a big video on last video uh, last week, um, both getting on great, no fighting, which is good. Um, they haven't paired yet; they might take a couple of months uh, to pair up. Um, but there's no fighting; they are starting to interact a little bit, um, slowly um, going into their environment. They've been in there for about maybe nine, maybe ten, ten days now. Um, See, look, is is the larger one here with the mist bar. Um, I have decided to name them, um, even the firefish as well. Um, so, oh, I've got to remember this. Okay, so the the smaller one at the front here, um, I've decided to name him Raven. Um, and the large one here, that is Tidal. Um, so we've got Tidal and Raven. Um, I guess no one really suggested any names well a few people did um, but I came up with these two myself um, and the firefish is um, Saber I decided to name him Saber and he's poking his head out this side here um, no I didn't ch I, don't, I guess I kind of like those names there's no really reason I chose them I just like them um, doesn't really suit the fish but I just like their names um, so that's why I decided to name them and that's about it for the update um, did hoof the sand to get any uh, diatoms out that was stuck in the sand that was wasn't getting eaten by the conch. Not really much to say about the conch apart from it's doing great eating and it's eating diatoms, which is good. Um, so yeah, I think that will uh, that will wrap it up for the um, day, today's um, update. Um, next week uh, you'll see me fingers crossed with corals. I might have um, might have a few corals in it next week for next video um because my nitrates are starting to come down now um so i'm off no pox now i can't run it without a skimmer so i'm just relying on water changes once a week about 18 percent my nitrates are currently at 8 um ppm which is quite low i would like to get them down to maybe four or three um 
but yeah um fingers crossed corals next week um so yeah you'll see me then bye my wife is decided to come out now that's great